Uh, thank you, everyone, for supporting and showing up to Orca Media's 2022 annual meeting. So uh, we look back on 2022. Um, and this is our annual meeting and open studio. So there's food, drinks, and all kinds of treats and games and stuff that I'll get to in a minute. So I'm just going to read a couple of notes. We've got our financials up for this display um, so everyone can take a look. 2022 financials, our numbers. Um, yeah, so I'm Christopher Viersema. I'm one of the co-directors here, along with Jin Ann and Zach Zorn. Um, so 2022 at Orca Media, we, uh, we took on a lot. We, um, so in addition to our regular coverage throughout the year, so if you uh, don't know, we cover government meetings, school board meetings, event coverage for local nonprofits. We have a TV studio that you're in right now that's available to community producers, community members. Um, all is free, and uh, it's super ex exciting place to connect to and engage with. So in 2022, we also took over the management of the 23-year-old Green Mountain Film Festival. Um, and yeah, it's exciting. We, uh, we, <laughs> we formed... Uh, we formed a local advisory board of Vermont filmmakers, Vermont um, festival programmers, nonprofit professionals, and film enthusiasts. So, um, yeah, that's gonna you're gonna see that coming back to the community hopefully in March of 2024. Sean Temple is here, local filmmaker and uh, one of our advisory board members, also Orca Media staff. Um, let's see. So another exciting thing was that. The Vermont Youth Documentary Lab uh, won first place uh, for the history and contemporary uh, issues at the 2023 Freedom and Unity Young Filmmakers Contest down in White River Junction. Thank you, thank you. So um, I'll show you, or I'll mention the screens here in a second. Uh, let's see, and in 2022, we also partnered with The Bridge on a series of local election forums, live election forums. You may have seen those, super exciting. Um, we launched some new youth media programs such as the Orca Media Make TV Camp in the summer and the Homeschooler Video Jam in the fall. We have some folks for, that attended that in 2022. Um, we hosted the Vermont Access Network, which is an organization that represents all 24 community media centers in the state of Vermont. We hosted their annual meeting in Montpelier here um, in 2022. Um, and that was awesome. We had everybody come here, and that was great. Uh, we said goodbye to our longtime executive director, Rob Chapman. Many of you know that he moved over to BevCam in Beverly, Massachusetts. Um, and then finally, one of the other highlights was we, um, as an organization, adopted a co-director model. So that's why, as I mentioned in the beginning, I am one of three co-directors. So um, we took on a more democratic uh, leadership approach, and it's been really great. And um, yeah, so today, uh, in addition to the great food out there from Teano Kitchen, um, there's some desserts from Hunger Mountain. We have uh, raffles for our new Orca Media Chino bags and some Orca Media t-shirts. So make sure to put your name uh, and email on the raffle. We're going to draw some stuff at 6 o'clock. So if you got to take off, that's fine. Just put your email address on there, and we'll let you know you won. Um, on the screens, you'll see... All of our youth media programming happening uh, on a loop in here, in this room. And then you'll see our community producers, all of their uh, programs that were submitted to the uh, National Hometown Media Awards um, over on the, in the common room there. So you'll see that. Um, some of uh, whom are here today, we have All Things LGBTQ, the three producers here. We have Larry from Ableton On Air. Um, yeah, so we've got some, we've got some people here. Um, and let's see, oh, we've got dot voting, so you can take a look at the, uh, the poster boards scattered throughout, there's some surveys that you can vote on. Um, let's see, that's about it. We're gonna hear from uh, our board chair in a minute, Michael Abadi, but first we're gonna hear from our special guest, <laughs> Peter Hirschfeld of Vermont Public. All right, come on down. <laughs> Uh, Christopher is much better at this than I am, so I wish I'd gone first. Um, so, uh, a little over six weeks ago now, um, I left our Vermont public office in the Capitol Plaza, which is on the second floor, um, carried as much equipment as I could, could hold, and walked out of the front 
front floor um, into hip deep water and waded up State Street and up Main Street to where I'd thankfully had the foresight to, to park my car on the hill um, before before the floods uh, came in earnest. Um, and this was like this moment where I knew like this is going to be a really important few weeks in my professional life. Um, but there was a real big problem, and that problem was that I didn't have anywhere to work. Internet was down at my house, um, and my ability to report uh, was was seriously compromised. Um, and the next morning, um, the folks at Orca had found out the situation that me and my colleague Bob Kinzel were in, and they invite us into their offices, um, and and they didn't just let us be there; they they made us feel like home, feel like we were at home. Um, gave us our own office. We had everything we needed to do, um, and and I wouldn't have been able to work uh, and and do the work that I needed to do, but for their generosity. So I'm incredibly grateful to you all for that. Um, yeah, um, but. You know, what they did for me is not what defines their organization. And, and to me, what defines it um, is a commitment to service that is as pure and egoless as anything I've encountered in my 25 or so years in the Vermont media landscape. Um, one of the things that uh, our audience at Vermont Public uh, was, was most grateful for in the last few years, and I list this slightly predates 2022, but it was our live broadcast of the COVID briefings that the governor was giving three times a week um, for, for close to 18 months. And we had so many people reach out to us and tell us how grateful they were that we were doing that. Um, and what they probably didn't know is that wasn't us providing that feed. That was Orca that was there every day. It was Orca that we relied on to get that to the 60 or thousand so people that were listening at any given moment. Um, uh, you know, when, um, the Green Mountain Care Board is meeting. Um, a lot of people in Vermont don't even know what that is. Um, the fact of the matter is that it's probably the most important regulatory body in the state. They're making incredibly important decisions um, about a $6 billion healthcare industry that represents 20% of the Vermont economy. And there's one media organization, exactly one media organization at all those public hearings, and it's ORCA. Um, and the only reason anybody can access that is because they're there for all of those. Um, when the Vermont Center for Independent Living wanted to host a Democratic primary uh, candidates forum <clears throat> last year, I was lucky enough to moderate that. So I got to watch in real time. Um, Orca didn't just agree to cover that event. Um, I watched Zach work with uh, the team of people at VCIL put in enormous time and energy to make sure that they could configure a broadcast that was gonna allow for a split screen so that people could see the sign language interpreters um, as they watched that debate. And um, ORCA and VCI, VCIL put on what, what I believe um, is hands down the most accessible political debate that Vermont has ever seen and I think it could be a really great model going forward. Um, so it, it, just like the, the breadth of stuff that Orca is doing is phenomenal. Um, my time here coincided with the Vermont Youth Documentary Lab. The hive of activity in here is just breathtaking. I mean, the amount of creativity and innovation and energy was, um, it was energizing just for me to be around. And if you walk by this building and didn't come in, you would, you would never know what's going on in here. And it's just, it, it's, it's remarkable and it's magical. Um, a lot of folks have um, sort of lamented the deterioration of local journalism. And as somebody who worked at the Times Argus and Rutland Herald 20 years ago, um, it's something that's particularly saddening for me. Um, but as that local reporting diminishes, um, organizations like ORCA uh, are just m more essential than they've ever been um, to having an informed citizenry. And local democracy, it's, it's a living organism, and ORCA is one of its vital organs. So um, thank you on, on behalf of Vermont Public for everything you do and for the community, and we're just really grateful you're here. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so Michael Body, everybody. I got it. Um, <laughs> Uh, Peter, you set expectations really low. That was brilliant. Um, 
I was very moved. I was really eloquent. Um, I just capturing what uh, the state's been through lately, and then the reminder of uh, the COVID era as well um, is just uh, really helpful context for us to remember that um, we're an essential service. We really, we really are. Um, and you know, a lot of it's not terribly sexy with the you know the select board meetings in our 13 towns but that is a historical record um and um you know it it is it's it's gavel to gavel so it is it's there for the digesting um and um i'm just uh i'm 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 at a at a loss to just just say thank you for for how you captured all that and then just the lifeblood of us is participation so Thank you, producers, all things LGBT and, and, and also Abled On Air. And then all our Make TV um, campers and our youth documentary. All, all of your efforts just, just um, enhance, enhance what we do. Um, and it's, it's, it's powerful. So if, you, if anyone, if you have a thought, if you have an idea, um, someone who would want to interview um, businesses as, as they try to figure out the next months and years um, that would be you know powerful I mean there's just this this I, I'm, there's so many ideas cooking out there with the the um, the two forums on the resiliency of the town and one more to come on Tuesday, thir next Thursday um, and that's at the high school which is opening on time somehow with six feet of water um, in the basement, they are they are uh, opening on time for the school year. Um, so and uh, f finally, um, Chris touched on the uh, the uh, it's called sociocracy. We had an executive director; um, he was great, hard to replace. Um, and as we were going through the hiring process, we realized, wow, the expertise is already here. Um, and we move to, uh, you know, when you have an executive director model, you have, a, you have a bit of a pyramid. So this is a less hierarchical look. And, and Jin, Zach, and um, Chris, just they, they work it out on a, on a colleague level really, really well. Um, and uh, I, I, I remember when the board passed that, let's do this co-director thing. Let's make the world less hierarchical. I felt really good going home, driving home, but then I was like, man, does, does that actually work? And they've like, it's just, we're, we're uh, I think we had the one year anniversary in June, yeah. um, and it's just humming along. I just want to thank you all, and also the uh, staff as well. But um, I think I've said enough. Um, oh, welcome Jessica, new board member. Um, Dave, thank you for, um, your tenure on the board as well. I would like to open up to any testimonials if anyone wants anything to say about the topic at hand. You got it. Okay, should I go in the front or whatever you um, want to do? Your okay. call, your call. My call, <coughs> all right. Just introduce yourself and Of course, go. no problem. So Zach, can get you on camera? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Well, um, my, name is, my name is Lawrence Seiler. Um, my wife can't, couldn't be here um, today because um, she is uh, getting better at rehab, uh, you know, for physical therapy. However, we host uh, Able Den On Air, which is a television uh, program for people with special needs. Um, first of all, um, a lot of people uh, with uh, special needs don't get a chance to do uh, community media, let alone um, media itself because you know um, Hollywood right now if you've been reading the uh, papers Hollywood right now is first really um, hiring uh, producers directors and other actors who are um, special needs and um, are as I would like to say uh, you know uh, people with many abilities so uh, for 30 years I've been uh, in community media first in New York and now Vermont uh, since 2015 and if it wasn't for Orca Able Den, Able Den On Air wouldn't exist so uh, on behalf of uh, the Able Den On Air 
able and on and on our team we would like to uh thank orca media for giving us a chance and thank the board for letting able and on air exist thank you very much Yeah, get, getting everyone to, many years ago, 2016, Linda Quinlan had an idea. Her idea was to do a show, along with Anne, an idea of nobody covered queer news, the issues that were important to our community, our perspective on things. So they approached Orchimedia and said, what would you think about? There was no resistance. What we got back was, how soon can you start? And since then, Zach has continued to make us to look better than we are. We thank you for it. We thank Orca for providing us with our home. And we're going to be here for a while. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, so help yourself to some food and some desserts, and thank you for coming. Thanks so much. Yeah, we got we got activities we got to get to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>